Yeah, why would you build your four walls up? Then push away the people that pulled strings to place you where you are now. I bet you still don't get Yep, that's right. This week, we're going on a trip to China together. As in, just making mother son cook me all our favorite Chinese meals all week in honor of AAPI Heritage Month. And don't worry, guys, I am compensating my mom for being my personal chef in the kitchen all week with um, my love and many compliments and endless support. She was actually a little too excited to cook for us and for my diet to consist of a little bit more variety than just peanut butter, oatmeal, and air fried broccoli. I'm failing. Bro. So welcome to a full week of eating only Chinese dishes, snacks, and restaurants to celebrate my culture with one of my only talents, eating. <laughs> We're time traveling back to like 2008, everyone, because this is truly everything my seven-year-old self used to eat back in the good old days. And this dish specifically has a very special place in my heart. It's like Chinese savory French toast, but better. You dip the manto, which is like this cute looking white bread bun that's a tiny bit sweet into the egg, let it soak it up, and you fry till golden and crisp. When I was little, this was always father-son's prize winning dish, but I later found out it was actually the only thing he knew how to make, but I still let him believe he's Iron Chef's son. My dad loves to work, is always on business trips, spends all of his time in front of his computer. I love that he's passionate about his job, but I love these egg mantos just a little bit more. I really cherished our manto time growing up, and maybe that's why they always tasted mm. so good. So good. Mm. You made it perfect. You no, know, it's so good. Mm. This is delicious. Did I already fail? Oh my god, how am I supposed to do that? Oh my god, someone's gonna cut their finger off today. I will be working on this for a long time. This is not easy. It's not gonna be thin. There is a Korean version, but I grew up with the Chinese version, and so did my mom. And basically, all the recipes in this video, my mom learned from her mom and dad. I never knew my grandma, but I knew she was like, eh, how do I put it, a beast. <laughs> like, carried buckets of water and three children on her back at the same time. I think we would have gone along because, I mean, we do love all the same food, so I kind of wish she could have seen this video, to be honest. But I really like that I'm able to get a taste of her in each and every meal. <gasps> Hopefully one day I'll pass down these recipes to my daughter and make her addicted to Bing too. Hopefully I won't pass down my chopping skills though because that would be truly unfortunate for her. Mother's son in her natural habitat. My mom is actually the dumpling queen. Since I could almost properly hold things in my hands, I've been helping my mom make dumplings as in just smashing the dough around and making a complete mess. Not much has changed to be honest. <laughs> A plus on the music selection. Dumpling time meant family time for me. I don't know, there weren't many times we could all be together when I was growing up, but every time dumplings were made, I remember the whole family would show up and we would just spend hours sitting at the table, talking and catching up and soaking in the time we had together around lots of dumps and a whole table of delicious foods. <laughs> Do you like the music? No. I love that certain foods are like time machines and can remind me of so many different memories and feelings and people from the past. See, I've been telling you guys, food is so much more than just fuel. Everyone, dumpling time! Mmm. Mmm. It's good. Shusha. Never knew Yuan Xiao was a Chinese New Year treat. To me, growing up, these were just cute, sweet, chewy, yummy dessert balls that made my mouth really happy, but apparently they symbolize family togetherness. And by eating these balls, it will bring your family happiness and good luck in the new year. Mm. I know, this kind of looks like you. To conclude day one, I highly recommend you all go out and get yourself some yummy, chewy balls. Only the people who've been here since the beginning will know. Bing is part of my being. I was once half Bing, half protein pancakes. If you've been here that long, I'm actually sending you virtual Bings to show my gratitude right now. The Bing addiction began, I'd say back in 2005 when I went back to China for a summer. And Every morning, my uncle and I would hit the streets at the crack of dawn and buy breakfast for the family, and we'd always stop at this little brick home where the Bing woman would be surrounded by freshly baked Bing, and we'd bring the Bing home, and my uncle would fry me an over medium egg, drippy, but not too drippy. And I'd eat it in front of the TV watching some Chinese children's shows. Yeah, those were the good days. Just me and my Bing, and this sheep. For those of you who've never tried Bing, it's kind of like a non-pita flat 
bread energy, but better. It's kind of like a layered doughy pastry that can be crunchy and crispy and flaky, or wow. chewy and soft and savory and just so, so ridiculously addicting. It can be sweet, salty, plain, rich, filled or unfilled, really anything you want it to be. The possibilities are endless, but a plate of being with eggs and ketchup, oh it's just wow. home to me. I'm actually really curious. Let me know in the comments what food tastes like home to you and why. My plate, beautiful. Tulio tulio. Mm, mm -hmm. It's really good. I still my god, you bought so many. Oh my god. It's not Chinese, but I'm craving it so bad. Yeah. Who knew mushing tomatoes and eggs would taste so good? Don't hate it till you taste it. This was dinner every day for 10 years of my life. Yeah, typically people's comfort foods are like ice cream, warm soup, fresh baked cookies, and mine is mashed tomato and egg. No shame, no shame, but there was some shame. I'll admit it, I don't really know how to say this, but I used to really dislike being Asian. Dislike might not even be strong enough. Despised, hated, loathed. Oh, I like that one. I loathed that I was Chinese. I even stopped eating Chinese food and made mother son change her cooking. I was a bossy daughter, apparently. I wanted to be less Chinese so that the other kids wouldn't think I was weird. I don't know why I've always thought that different meant worse. And growing up in communities that were not exactly ethnically diverse, being Chinese meant I looked quite different. Being Chinese meant I'd never fit in with my classmates and I would never be able to match up to their definition of being- Hey, mommy! Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know, it always seemed like the world was trying to convince me that I'd be happier if I looked more like everyone else. Anyone else, actually. It wasn't until I started sharing my meals and my life with you guys, and instead of judging me, you guys were intrigued and accepting and interested in Mother Son's cooking, and it completely transformed my perspective on my culture. Kind of made these parts of me that I was trying to hide for so long feel special. I recently found a brand called Naywai that makes comfortable underwear, loungewear, and athleisure, and I just need to share their products and message with you guys. Their mission is about making clothing that is made to live in. And this really stuck with me for some reason. I spent like over a decade trying to shape my body to fit every piece of clothing, ideal, expectation of what I was meant to look like when I was actually meant to just live in this body and in clothing that was meant to fit my body. I'm wearing their Barely Zero collection. It's made with fabric that stretches and adapts to your body to comfortably fit different body types. This is the new fixed cup wavy bra with a seamless back and a wavy pattern hemline and it's so light and buttery and I even wear their products out with skirts or denim sometimes. It fits me so perfectly even though I bought it online because if they have your size, these bras are made to adapt to you. This collection's message is your size is a size. The point is to fit the curves and folds and crevices of my body. Shouldn't that just be every clothing's purpose? No seriously, I was so blown away with these bras I went and bought some for my mom too. Because they potentially be the most comfortable thing I've ever worn. You can visit nay.life to check out their products. So refreshing to find a brand that's telling me that they want my body to look like how it looks. Move how it does, be the color and shape and build and size that it is that I should love to live in my body, with my body. Because as they said, your size is the size. My mom makes these wontons and then she just freezes them. Wow. So we can just put them in water and cook them whenever we want wontons. You unpeel all the eggs okay. one by one. Enter into this. How many days do you put it in here for? Yeah, I can't. Someone's eating all my eggs. How many eggs have you eaten this week? Like 18. <laughs> I'm trying your egg. For oh, yeah. You ate 18 of these? Let me have your egg. Let me Huajiar is translated into Chinese flour rolls, but don't worry, it tastes way better than um, a flour. It's like another Chinese steam bun variation. Kind of like Bing because there's also a light oily filling, but fluffier and kind of like manto, but saltier and more delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so excited. I missed my air fry broccoli. 
Apparently this is a sweet potato, okay? So it's just brown and gooey. Mm. This is my mother's favorite treat. This is called Shen Japian. I've eaten it 3,000 times, but I can't really put it into words. The best description I can give is that it's a sweet, sour, chewy candy, but it's unlike any gummy or candy in North American grocery stores. My mom always tells me that it was her exam season stress snack. She said she would buy a bunch of them and keep them in a jar and put them on a high shelf above her bed out of reach so she wouldn't eat them all. And whenever exam season came around, she would climb up and grab the jar down and demolish the entire thing. Honestly, same. I feel it like this. Asian fruit roll up. I have one, you have one. Savage. I freaking love sweet and sour chicken. Why did diet culture have to give Chinese food such a bad rep? Chinese restaurant Chinese food. Huge issue for me when I was younger. I categorized it into the bad and unhealthy compartment in my brain. I tried to avoid it at all costs, but that also meant I was missing out on the connection that was happening around this food. I want us to test and challenge and question the compartments and labels and sneaky restrictive mindsets we have around certain foods. And listen, whatever your reason is for avoiding your favorite foods, if it has to do with your worth, how your body looks, your weight or progress or willpower, whatever bad thing you think will happen if you eat it, I can almost guarantee you it's not gonna happen. Mmm, this is very good. Mm, I'll have to. I really like this. There's nothing on there. <laughs> it's just a bone. Mom, you did yourself today. Um, Look, can I touch it? Let me touch it. Oh my. <laughs> oh my god. Careful. <laughs> Joe slash kanji, I think will forever be my I want something soothing, something warm, my sickness soup. Best of champions. It's like a Chinese oh, rice God. porridge and the rice boils into like this thicker pudding-like consistency. Mother son, God of drippy egg. Oh my God. That's so good. Whoa, Whoa, be careful. All the veggies going in the noodles. The new diet culture took a lot away from me, but it took away things I didn't even realize. Like never taste testing the most questionable street foods just because it was fried. Sure. Or choosing to boil in the million degree China weather instead of eating all the yummy Chinese popsicles to survive the heat. It's so beautiful, I don't want to eat it. Mm -hmm. Noodles are so perfect. It smells so good. Instead of consuming culture, I was consumed by food instead. And when I was younger, the more I looked around at the women in China, the larger and more out of place I felt. And this feeling never really disappeared. Yes, phenomenal. No matter how small my body got, in my head, I was always too big. The fact that I didn't fit into any of the sizes in China also didn't help, but that's an issue with them and not an issue with me. Wow. So here's a reminder to you. From someone who's missed out on a lot of once in a lifetime experiences and just simple everyday joys, your body is actually meant to look different from what you believe or what other people believe is culturally acceptable. You're also actually allowed to define what you think is beautiful, what is healthy for you. Society doesn't have that power over you. If, you know, you don't give it the power. And oh, stop waiting to love your body or enjoy life until after a workout program or diet or after you get less busy. Choose to choose yourself now. Your body, the one that picks you back up every day, allows you to feel the sunshine rays on your skin that makes memories for you. Spend more time making memories with it instead of spending all your time picking it apart. A beautiful day to go eat lots of yummy, yummy food. Clouds got third and gray, third coffee of the day. Oh, my toes grab me. Tripped. Here. Mommy, are you excited? Oh my god. Perfect.
Question for the carb haters in this world. Why? I just don't get it. Let's stop it with the good carbs, bad carbs, low carbs, no carbs. Yes, they are simple, complex, easier to digest, higher fiber. Some taste way better than others. And some can be used to celebrate birthdays while others can't. It's energy for our bodies, brains, hearts. We need carbs to breathe in the beautiful smells of freshly baked yams, to jump around because we're so excited about what mother son's making for dinner, to digest all the Chinese crackers I ate and forgot to film this week. I <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Yes, there are more nutrient dense, higher protein, or healthified options, but sometimes those other options can wait. Sometimes a low calorie protein cookie just can't replace the real deal warm, ooey gooey, freshly baked chocolate chip one. The chicken breast and broccoli is nourishing, but this here nourishes my life. Definitely got paper in there. The sweet and the salty. Holy shit. I think I've fallen for you. It satisfies my taste buds and my dim sum dreams and his family time. And sometimes that's just more important. Sometimes life is more than just the perfect amount of macronutrients, more than discipline or a balanced plate. Maybe it's about being open to eating past fullness because the buns are too good and trusting that our bodies will know how to handle it because we aren't having black golden egg buns every day. Maybe it's about caring more about being with the people you love, not about how many servings you've had. Oh my God. Maybe life is about actually learning to live with all our favorite foods instead of trying as hard as we can to live without them. Because from my professional eating experience, life is so much more delicious and happy and so much fuller. And we let ourselves be full. It's a fried rice pyramid. <laughs> My muscle will still be there tomorrow. I will continue to eat even more carbs tomorrow. My body will not change tomorrow. You know what? I think this is a pretty good sign for you to go get some of your favorite carbs you've been thinking about eating and eat them. Oh my god! Oh my god! I just bumped into Linda. <laughs> oh my god! It looks so good. Oh, we can carry your bag. They're the best. It's real cute. Oh my god! Which one do I get? Your mochi. Boom! Oh, Mommy, this is my childhood. <laughs> Whoa! Tofu pudding. It's really silky, kind of sweet. It tastes kind of like the inside of a creme brulee, but it's tofu. I spent a lot of time this month reflecting on my favorite family meals, memories, vacations, and I finally came to the conclusion that other than eating, my favorite family memory would have to be when we used to work out together in the basement on my pink mat. Watching this footage over made me realize I'm only ever wearing two sports bras that I also never washed because I hated and refused to ever buy expensive workout clothes. But now, workout clothes complete my workouts, which is perfect because the Gymshark sale is a 60% off. The waffle, the waffle. Favorite. This, this, this. Definitely this. And I'm feeling basic, comfy, sunny, colorful, colorful. cute, it's like a watermelon, like a, a boss woman. Go now. Get the waffle in this color too. Woo, take out. Always get the same thing. Sushi never disappoints. I only have a couple weaknesses, guys. Physics, romantic mm. comedies, geography of absolutely anywhere in the world, mm. editing software glitches. Also, if you offer me a Timbit almond croissant, anything chocolate peanut butter, I can't say no. And the bubble waffle. I, I can smell the bubble waffles from here. You know when you walk by a Cinnabon and it literally overtakes your entire body? The bubble waffle smell is like Cinnabon, but times it by 4,000. And it leads us right to the bubble waffle. Oh, how Bubble waffle. Best invention ever. I eat a bubble. <laughs> that is the best thing you had this whole weekend. It is. Whoa, 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 what is this you ask? Beijing Kaoya or Beijing Peking Duck or just phenomenalness. It's basically a super thin wrap filled with sliced pieces of roast duck. Mm. It just hits all the right spots. That's a good mushroom. That is really pretty. <laughs> 
hint of sweetness from the sauce with the juicy and flavorfulness of the duck and the crisp crunchiness of the cucumber all held together in a biteable size wrap, which makes it just too easy to inhale 15 of them. It truly is a work of art, and how could I not love them when my mom looks like the happiest human on earth eating her duck wrap? It's been so many years. In my family, we don't really say, I love you, I'm proud of you, I miss you. We don't hug or show physical signs of affection. Like typically my dad and I just high five before he leaves on six month long business trips. And that may sound weird to some of you, but I've come to realize we do do and say all those things. Oh my God, gift to this earth. It's just in different ways. I love you is when my mom spends hours cooking for me. I care about you is in the manto egg that my dad makes or when everyone's putting food on everyone else's plate except their own. I respect you is in pouring the tea. I miss yous are in the have you eaten. I'm proud of you is when they give me the best bing slice or the juiciest dumpling. They remind me of all you. And hugs are the unexpected fruit plates presented to me at random times during the day. Do I little duck? <laughs> Food really is our love language. And for a good decade of my life, I couldn't say I love you back because food was only calories. Only good or bad, I had to work to deserve it, exercise to get rid of it. It was guilt and shame and weight gain. <laughs> I'm so glad I can now see it as a form of connection, of enjoyment, a language, an event, an entire week of food content to celebrate my family's traditions and other cultures too. And I vow for the rest of my life, I will proudly eat bings and buns to celebrate that I've finally found a place for them in my life again. These dishes were the fuel that helped me grow into the hungry, annoying, emotional, slightly confused foodie that I am today. So go and order your favorite Chinese food or try some for the first time or manifest your mother sun energy and try making some from scratch. I've linked a bunch of recipes in the description also, Mother Son wanted me to tell you guys she has invited you all over to eat Bing with us, so we gotta arrange that pretty soon. I love you guys so much, more than you know, like maybe even more than bubble waffles. Please don't forget that because that's a pretty freaking huge deal.